if we would press keyboard key one, you can see we have equipped a sword. Let's press keyboard key two. It finds the next quick uh, empty slot in our equipment and equips it to that one. Let's press, press number three. Let's press number five. Let's consume something. So the medical box should heal us. The banana should give us less hunger and the thirst should refill our uh, the water should refill our thirst parameters and as you can see those items did get removed from our slots also what we will be able to do is drag items on top of our characters to consume them i already consumed all of my bananas and medical boxes so i'm not going to be able to show that but it does work and the same thing goes for our weapons if we drag those on top of our preview character it finds the first empty slot and equips the items on top of our character so the first thing that is really important which i already mentioned in the previous video in our items database we gotta make sure that we have types for our items uh, so my types will be health hunger thirst weapon arm and armor also what is important for the last three of these is that we set up some value so that we can actually restore some of our health thirst and hunger so first let's go to our third person character and let's quickly create a function which will actually allow us to use our quick slots so for that one new function let's call this use quick slot and for this one we need an input and let's call this slot index let's make this into an integer and also let's simply promote it to a local variable so let's call this local slot index now over here let's drag in our quick slots variable and let's get a copy to our uh, specific slot index so let's drag in our local variable let's get this value now let's break this uh, split the pins and let's do a switch depending on our item source uh, in my case i only have two sources so one of those is our player slots so player and the other one is the backpack which i called the inventory then at this point we want to get our actual slots so let's drag in our player slots and also let's drag in our equip backpack and let's get its uh, player slots there we go now we have our backpack and we have our player slots then from here we want to again get a copy to the index that we received from our quick slots so let's connect that one and let's do the same thing for our backpack now let's promote one of these to a local variable to have less wirings so let's call this the local item and let's set this for so for the top one let's set it from the player from this one right here and let's do the same thing on the bottom let's set the local item but let's set it from the uh, backpacks player slots then once we are done with this we can get the data table row but uh, uh, make sure to connect the executions for both of these but do not use these two right here make sure you drag in a new reference to the local item so once we have set it let's get the new reference Let's split these pins and let's get our data table and the actual row name. Now at this point we need the S inventory structure. So I'm going to go to my add item to equipment and copy one from over here. Let's copy that one to our quick slots. There we go. We have connected that one. And now let's do another switch depending on our type. So switch on string. And over here, so let's connect the execution. We have quite a few at least I have quite a few types so let's begin the first one is the armor then we have the arm we have a weapon we have the health we have the hunger and the last one for me is the thirst now for the let's begin with the health thirst and hunger and from those ones we want to run our server add stats make sure to use the server one if you are uh, if you have the multiplayer game uh, if not you can simply run the add stats and now for the type let's use the type from our s inventory structure and for the value let's use the value there we go so it's getting converted from in my case from an integer to a float and it should work just fine now let's work on the top piece over here we need a new function because I don't want to have a big mess over here, so I'd rather do it in another function. Let's So let's create a new one. Let's call this find empty equipment. And for this one, we need an input. And in my case, it's I'm going to name this type and make it into a string. Then I'm going to do a switch on this string. And I have only three equipment pieces. So the first one is the armor. Then we have the arm and a weapon. 
Now I'm going to add a new local variable to this function and I'm going to call this uh, local possibilities. The grammar probably is wrong. Um, but we need to make sure that this is an integer and an array of integers and these are basically going to be the possibilities for the indexes which we could use to equip our items. So let's simply drag from our local possibilities and add a new entry. First let's work with the armor. So I know that my armor slot is index 0 so this is just fine. Now I'm gonna copy this, move this down a little bit, connect the execution to the arm, connect the uh, RI itself and I know that for the arm I have slots 1 and so I'm gonna copy this once more connect this to the other add connect the RI and the other slot is number 2 so I'm gonna copy these two more times and I'm actually gonna copy the third, third one right away connect the RI like so connect the execution and so I have my weapons on slots number 3, number 4 and number 5 now from all of these let's drag in our local possibilities array and let's do a loop for each with a break. Now over here what we want to do is drag in our equipment array and we want to get a copy to the array elements index. So basically one of these values that we have input there. Then I want to split this and split the item and I want to check if the item row name is equal to the empty so whether the item is empty and make sure you don't make grammar mistakes on this one this is very important so empty let's do an if branch check then from the loop body and so here we need uh, a couple of local variables again so the first one is going to be the local found which is going to be a boolean and a single variable and then another one is going to be the local index which needs to be an integer. So now let's connect both of these to the true route. So the local found will be true in this case and the local index is going to be our array element. Now once we are done with this we can go directly to our break and from the complete completion of the loop we can return and we need to return two values. So we need to return the found value which is a boolean and we need to return the index itself which is of course an integer then let's connect our local variables so local found local index and we are good with this function now that means that we can go back to our use quick slots function and run this event on our armor arm and weapon switches so let's drag in our find empty equipment Let's connect this thing right here and for the type let's use the type from our S inventory structure. Then we can do an if branch check from the found result and if we f have found then we want to add item to the equipment using the index from our find empty equipment and the item is our local item variable like so. Then we can do a if branch check to check if we were successful with adding an item to our equipment and then we can remove item from our slots. But to do so we again want to copy our uh, switch and we want to copy our quick slot with its get node and uh, if you are wondering why we are not removing item beforehand because well we do not know if the slot is empty uh, so first let's consume the item use it and only then let's remove it so we are doing this twice so now we want to connect both of the executions so from the add server stats uh, server add stats to our switch and also from the true route of this branch right here now from the player route we simply want to run our remove remove amount at index so the index that we want to remove is the one from our quick slots get node this value right here the amount probably is going to be one uh, to consume one item at a time and the array is going to be our player slots then from our inventory I want to get my equipped backpack reference and I want to remove amount from that one so remove amount at index again the index again is the um, index from our quick slots get node and the amount again is going to be one now uh, if we are finished with the system we might have a few weird things about refreshing our HUDs so over here I actually want to do a if branch check 
and I need a new variable. So let's create a regular variable and I'm gonna call this is UI open to know whether our UI is open or not. Let's make this into a Boolean and use that as a condition on this if branch check. So now if the UI is not open, then we are sure that we have simply consumed an item and all we wanna do is uh, refresh our HUD but let's say our inventory is open. Uh, we do not want to refresh our HUD. We do not want it to spawn on top of our inventory UI. So instead of uh, if the UI is open, instead of refreshing the HUD, we want to refresh our inventory widget. But now we need to actually set our is UI open. So let's go to our interface create widget function. And at the end of this one where we are creating a user widget, we want to set our is UI open to be true. And on removal, so on remove widget function, we want to set this back to be false like so. So now we are going to use the correct uh, refresh the correct widget. Now let's actually try to run this function and to do so I'm gonna go to the event graph and I'm already using keyboard keys 1 and 2 so I will replace my weapon swapping to let's say like a keyboard key uh, let's say like an R key and perhaps let's use a keyboard T key so I'm gonna use those ones instead and now from, for my quick slots, I want to have keyboard key events from 1 up until 8, since I have 8 uh, quick slots, so I'm gonna get all of those. So now that I have these events right here, from every single one of these pressed, I want to run our newly created use quick slot function. Now for the slot index on keyboard key 1, I want to use 0 since our arrays begin with 0 instead of 1 and on 2, I'm going to use the 1 and on 3, I'm going to use the 2 and so forth up until the keyboard key 8. So there we go, I've set up all of my events nicely. So now let's actually try this out, uh, make sure like always let's try this on the clients instead of running on the server. So let's pick up a backpack as our client. Let's have some items. Let's pick those up. Let's place a few of them in our player slots perhaps. Then let's drag those to our quick slots like so. Let's have some of our consumables as well. And now let's try this. So if we press 1, there we go. We have a weapon. Everybody can see our weapon. 2, we have a vest. Number 3, we have our arm piece. Let's give this a try for the number 6. You can see our uh, hunger went up, our thirst is going up, and our health is also going up. As you can see, we have consumed all of those items and we have equipped our equipment. Now, the last thing for us left to do is actually try once we drag and drop something on top of our character so that we would actually consume this item. So I'm quite a lazy person. I don't like to use the same, do the same things over and over again. So what I will do is create a small invisible uh, ninth quick slot. So in my third person character, I'm going to click on my quick slots and I'm going to add a new entry. So now we have nine array elements. And if we would now go to the game, you can see there are nine quick slots, but we only want eight. So now I will go to the UI let's see quick slots panel where we are generating our quick slots on our screen so we have a create quick slots function so I'm gonna drag this back a little bit and for the RI index I'm gonna check if this is equal to uh, so let's say 8 since that is the last index uh, index 8 we begin with 0 so we shall do a if branch check on that one to see if it's true and only if it's not true, if it's false, then we want to create a new quick slot. Also, if you have something that uh, perhaps your quick slots grow over time, get more or less, you can also drag from your quick slots. You can uh, write the length and that returns the length of the array. But since the length begins with one and the array begins with zero, you want to minus one always on this one and then connect this like so. So now if we would press play once more, you can see we are back to eight slots. So I'm going to use this ninth uh, quick slot in order for us to uh, quickly consume an item once we drop it on top of our preview character. So let's create a new widget which will hold our preview. 
So widget blueprint, let's call this UI player preview. Let's open this up. Also, let's open up our UI uh, equipment panel. At least in my case, this is where I store my uh, characters preview. Let's go to the graph and let's look at the binding for that one. So let's make sure to copy all of the nodes from within it so that we don't have to recreate it. Now back in our UI player preview, let's have an image just like we have over there. Let's right click the canvas panel, replace with the child and we have our image. Now let's create a new binding for the image. Let's paste in our nodes and our preview is going to be displayed in this widget as of right now. There we go. Now let's create a on drop event in this widget. So let's add new override function and let's look for the on drop event. There we go. So from our operation, we want to cast to our drag and drop item operation, just like previously. Then we want to cast to our character. So cast to the third person character in my case and get the owning player pawn as a reference to this character. Then from our items drag and drop operation, we can get the tag and we can get the index and those are the only two values we will need. Then from our tag we can do a switch on string. Let's connect this to over here. Let's add two entries to this one since I only want to accept items from my player slots and from my backpack so the inventory. Now let's move this out of the way and actually we can connect our failed casts and the default route to over here. Check this to be true to identify that the operation has been handled. And then as our character we want to get our quick slots and we want to set the RI element for both of these. And the index, well again we can type in 8 or we can simply for our quick slots we can get the length to get the last uh, last entry, so minus integer minus one, and this is our index. And for the item, let's make this quick slot and let's connect our tag to the item source and our index to the index. So now, secretly off screen, we are adding this item to our quick slots first, and then we are going to try to consume it. So to consume it again from our third person character, let's run our use quick slots. There we go. Let's connect the quick slots index from over here as well. The same index as for set the array element. And then we can return true at the end of it all. There we go. So now let's actually implement this widget in our UI equipment panel. So in the designer, I'm going to select my image, which holds the preview. I'm going to copy the styling, in my case, only the padding. Then I can simply delete this. And let's look for our UI preview, player preview move this in the same location. So let's give it the same parameters. So let's paste in the padding. Let's make sure this is set to fill. And there we go. We are done with this. So now let's give this the final try to see if everything is working just fine. Let's let's pick up a backpack. Let's pick up some items from the ground. There we go. So we have our items. Press I. Now let's drag a banana off top of our character and as you can see the hunger went up. Let's try the same thing with the water. It is getting consumed nicely. If we drag the uh, west it does get equipped. Let's try this from our player slots. There we go. Our weapons are getting added to our character as well. So everything seems to be working just fine. And that's gonna be it for today's video. Like always, hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe and see you in the next episode.